So welcome back. We have been looking at how Prolog handles your program, how it answers queries that you are asking it. Given a program, given your program which is treated as a knowledge base, and we have seen that unification is an integral part of uh, uh, the way Prolog works, and how theorem proving works in general, essentially. Now, in our case, unification matches two terms by finding substitutions that make the structure of those two terms the same. So, if you have two terms T1 and T2, then are they the same? The statement T1 equal to T2 returns true when the two terms unify and the unification process we have seen exactly. This stands for not equal to T1 is not equal to T2 and this returns true when the terms do not unify essentially. We cannot find out this thing. Now, Prolog uses a simpler notion of unification. It does not do the occurs check uh, because of efficiency reasons uh, and we remember that, that we can the occurs check says that you cannot substitute for x a value f of something 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 which contains an x. So, if x occurs in the pattern that you are trying to unify it with or that you are trying to substitute it with, then you cannot do that essentially. So, if you want to use that feature, then you have to use unifies with occurs check, the occurs check is there or not. But in general, by itself, Prolog does not do the occurs check, that so it could lead to some logical errors essentially. So, we are talking about unifying terms. If you have two constants, sun equal to sun, it will return true. If there are two functions with a different function name, f and g, it will return false. If there are two different constants, it will return false. If there are two functions name which match, so we have f and f on both the sides, then if their arguments can be unified, remember that is how we did unification, so there was a procedure called sub unify. So, if their arguments can be unified, then it will say yes. So, in this case, the argument to the right hand side is x and the argument to the left hand side is g of y and there is nothing which stops you from saying that x equal to g of y and unification succeeds and it also tells you what is a uh, substitution that you are using for which variable that you have unifying x with g of y. If you say sun is not equal to moon, it will say true. If you say is x equal to sun, it will say yes, it will not say yes, but it will say x equal to sun. It sounds like circular, but the second one is the answer that is prolog, the, the, the substitution that prolog has found. The first one is a query that is there some x such that equal to sun and the answer is yes, if x equal to sun then it will become equal to the term sun. Likewise, if you say x equal to f of x, it will say yes, x equal to f of x, but this has not used the occurs check. So, it has allowed you to say this, which of course, as you can see, can run into logical conundrums. If you were to say unify with occurs check f of f of x, then it will say false. So, if you want to take care of that particular case, you must use unify with occurs check. So, we said that if two terms can be unified, then prolog will say yes. So, if you ask is 6 equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3, it will say no, because it cannot find any way of making them the same. Anyway, there are no variables in that and uh, we have not evaluated the term 1 plus 2 plus 3. On the other hand, if you said that is this list of 3 to 1 the same as a list written in a different format, 
in the head tail format, it will say yes, they can be unified because internally this is same as this as we have said essentially. No, whether we talk about con pairs or whether we talk about dotted pairs or the head tail notation, it is all amounts to the same binary tree this thing. You can ask that x plus y plus z is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 and it will happily say yes. Yes, that these two terms can become equal. If you say substitute x with 1 and y with 2 and z with 3 essentially, because then of course, they will become equal. You can even ask that is x plus y equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3. Again, it will say yes and say yes, if x is 1 plus 2 and y is 3, then these two terms will become equal. Remember x and y stands for they are all terms and these are terms can be defined in a nested fashion. The function symbols can occur inside plus is a function symbol, it can occur nested at any level essentially. Similarly, if you ask that is this list, can it be the same as this list? The answer will be yes if x equal to 3 and y is equal to lists containing 2, 1. Likewise, a list containing x and y and something else which is z, can it be equal to 3, 2, 1? The answer is yes if x is 3, y is 2 and the something else is a list containing 1. So, unification will do all this for you. So, is this pair x and a list starting with x, can they be made the same? Yes, if x equal to 3 and so x is 3 if it takes care of the first part, so the second part remains and t is equal to 2, 1. You can use uh, a function name inside and you can match it with a variable z. So, you will see in the answer z is equal to a function of something and what is that something? Whatever t matches with and this t will match with this part 2 and 1. So, 2 and 1 will come here. So, if you want to write a program to find out whether an element is present in the list or not, uh, let us call the name of this program as occurs, which we will abbreviate to OCC here. And we want to say that our first argument is some element, the second argument is a list and we are asking whether this element is there somewhere in the list essentially. This can be done by this program here. Uh, the first line written here is actually redundant. Uh, what it is saying and if you want to put it down to show that logically this can never happen because you know the condition is fail which means the consequent can never be true. So, essentially what you are saying is that nothing can occur in the empty list essentially. So, there is an empty list and whatever you put here this formula can never be made true essentially. That is what it is saying essentially. It is never used in, in, in running the this thing. Otherwise, it says that x occurs in a list if x is the first element in the list. Again, this true is redundant, you can leave it out as we have done in base clauses earlier. But if it is not in the first element, then occurs x in this, this whole thing is a list is true if x occurs in the tail of the list. So, to determine whether an element is there in the list, look at the head element. If it is there as the head element, then say yes, it is there in the list. Otherwise, look in the tail element. 
So, if you ran this program with these queries, as you can see the first query will return false because in the empty list there can be nothing. And you must think about this that even if you did not write the first clause, it would still return false because of the fact that prolog has this idea of negation which says that I was not able to show that it is a 2 belongs to this list and therefore, it must be false which is called negation by failure. But if you ask this does 2 belong to the list containing 2, 2, 3 then it will say yes one time then for the second time it says yes again it has found another 2 that means and then it says that is all. So, no more 2s inside the list. Now, if you want to be careful and simply say that just tell me whether it is there in the list or not do not tell me all occurrences of that element you can do so by this feature which we will study it is called cut it is called the cut operator it has a procedural semantics it does not have a logical semantics but we will see that uh, in a short while. So, what is the impact of cut is that uh, once it is found that there is one occurrence of 2 it does not look into the tail of the list this cut stops from looking it at the tail of the whatever remains essentially ok you have found a 2 just return the answer true and that is the end of the whole thing. We will look at cut we will come back and look at cut let us take another short break.